okay so the course is applied structural mechanics applied structural mechanics so before getting into designing of any aircraft particularly structural design of an airplane of an aircraft or any vehicle we need to understand the external loads or pressure loads the external loads acting on the airplane during flight landing and take off conditions everything must be known before initiating our structural design of an airplane so how to determine all this uh, structural uh, loads uh, i mean the air loads acting on the structure how to determine all these things means first we need to have a thorough theoretical knowledge in aerodynamics because i should take the modern aircraft they fly in uh, subsonic supersonic transonic or whatever the speed ranges first we need to have a thorough knowledge in aerodynamics to predict or determine the air loads that are acting on the airplane during flight landing or take off conditions or during maneuvering conditions also okay if you take an airplane if you take a wing configuration itself there is a lot of uh, i mean there is there are wide range of wing configurations like uh, straight rectangular wing straight tapered wing or uh, swept wing delta wing and all these uh, i mean wing configurations they include leading and trailing edge devices which promotes uh, i mean for better lift and or uh, and the control characteristics and also the the presence of engine or the power plant nasal units the external fuel tanks that also affects the air flow or the pressure distribution around the wing which affects the magnitude and distribution of the pressures pressures or air forces around the wing and also the presence of the fuse lodge or the airplane body also influences the air flow over the wing that's very very important and uh, the most of the companies uh, airplane companies the loads on the airplane are determined by the group of engineers group of engineers uh, assigned to the structural analysis section and this group is often referred to as a aircraft load calculation group aircraft load calculation group and under this group there are uh, various sub domains the work for a different uh, for getting different results stress results for different analysis results okay nowadays we are having different uh, kind of softwares working efficiently more efficiently to predict our structural analysis results and also our airplane is designed to carry a definite job so the aircraft results in uh, results in different size configuration and performance okay so as the airplane uh it depends on the i mean the performance or whatever is the airplane depends on the velocity the velocity of the airplane that's the speed of the airplane and the rate at which it flies that is the acceleration or these are the very 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 important that we need to uh remember okay while doing the calculations and the magnitude of this acceleration or the acceleration factor is uh, under the control of the pilot and also we need to calculate whether the particular acceleration Uh, they used to tell like 2g 3g 4g something like that whether this acceleration uh, would be i mean resisted by the human body i mean it stand by the human body so that uh, without any injury or whatever it is during the flight service so in by keeping all those things in our mind we need to do the calculations structural design calculations and also the structures must withstand all these 2g 3g values the acceleration values okay and also uh, if you want to design an airplane so that it can uh, resist more loads keeping that in mind obviously the weight of the airplane would increase and it would decrease our performance also when it comes to this specific loads limit loads or applied loads so limit loads or applied loads are nothing but the maximum loads that are anticipated uh, during an airplane's lifetime of service and this applied load is used by the civil aircraft agencies and this term up to, uh, i mean uh, limit load or applied we are having two loads okay and the applied load is used by the military agencies and the limit load is used by the civil aircraft agencies so the aircraft should be in such a way capable of supporting the limit loads without suffering any uh, permanent deformations it should not cause any detrimental permanent deformations or permanent failures in such a way the load should be subjected to or the calculation should be in such a way uh, in order to design our aircraft okay 
so at all the loads within or up to the limit loads uh, the deformation of the structure should not uh, interfere with the safe operation of the airplane okay so even if any i mean a deformation occurs it should come back to its or it should retain its original shape or size okay so being elasticity property and when you go to the next the ultimate or design load these two are same one and the same and the factor of shift is nothing but design load divided by uh, limit load or applied load okay so whatever uh, i mean the structure structural design uh, with the help of a factor of safety only we make a conclusion whether the design is safe or not and in general the overall factor of safety is uh, 1.5 so the government of uh, the i mean the government requirements the dgc also says that design load uh, operating i mean uh, having a factor of safety of 1.5 uh for a structure it will not cause any failure so the aircrafts are not supposed to undergo greater loads than the specified limit loads okay we are saying that we are specifying some limit loads and uh, aircraft supposed not to undergo the greater loads than the specified limit loads anyhow there should be a small amount of reserve strength against the structural failure so that it can extend to i mean it can resist to some extent if it is not able to resist means if it fails means there is a possibility of replacing the uh, particular component or a particular unit a particular machine whatever it is why this is happening means uh, due to many factors like uh, the approximations involved in aerodynamic theory and also the structural analysis theory for example you will be calculating the leg to drag pitching moment if it is coming in decimals you will round off all those values all those approximations it just builds up like anything uh, that comes to the total approximation so because of that will we are getting some uh, errors or some factors which influence the structural design failure and also the variation in physical properties of materials and also the variation in fabrication and uh, inspection standards all the things you might have studied in uh, aerospace materials course i guess so the most important reason for the i mean airplane safety is due to the fact every airplane every airplane is having its own maximum velocity it can be flown and the minimum velocity it can be flown and the maximum acceleration it can be subjected to in during a flight or landing these things we should keep in mind so with this uh, i mean minimum speed maximum speed and also the maximum altitude which the aircraft can fly the maximum acceleration or with the help of all these things we are able to uh, i mean uh, develop a flight envelope or vn diagram which you would have studied in uh, uh, what to call the flight dynamics course okay so if you take this accelerations for example or the velocity or the speed of the aircraft or the control of the pilot so these are the the accelerations are under the control of the pilot and if the load exceeding i mean if the load experienced by the aircraft exceeds the limit load it should not prove any serious uh, i mean in a serious problem in uh, safety point of view because the airplane carries uh, passengers and other payloads etc it should not cause any permanent structural deformation okay even if it causes uh, it should be like a easily replaceable one and it should not cause any severe loss to any human lives that's very very important as far as the structural design is concerned any structural design is concerned not only aircraft okay so we can easily uh, categorize the loads that are acting on a conventional uh, aircraft okay for example uh, air loads okay this is due to airplane maneuvers airplane maneuvers which is under the control of the pilot and also due to air gust which is not under the control of the pilot okay and uh, landing loads landing on low uh, land and landing on water arresting okay arresting this is the term which we use when the aircraft is landing on a carrier that is a ship and all warship or whatever it is power plant loads thrust torque take off loads catapulting and assistant take off with auxiliary short period thrust units special loads hoisting type airplane towing airplane beaching of all type airplane fuse loads pressurizing weight and inertial loads so these are the major 
I mean, uh, the broad general category of external loads that are acting on a conventional aircraft. So let us take this basics from physics, real, which we will be using these expressions. These expressions you would have uh, learned in school itself, school days itself, like uh, you would have learned about like V minus U is equal to AT, like initial velocity, final velocity after time, and distance move in time. So we'll be using all these expressions to solve the problems, okay? So by using the airplane, the velocity, initial velocity, the final velocity, and the time taken, find the acceleration, find the distance traveled in time, something like that. We'll be using all these things for solving the problems or in MCQ. And here I have shown a very, I have shown very simple example. Okay, this you'll study again in flight dynamics. Suppose if the aircraft dives like this, this is a flight path I have shown here, and this is the center of a curvature or the center of a turn or center of rotation, whatever it is. And here you could find a n, the normal acceleration and the transitional acceleration. And find from the Newton's law, we are finding these uh, forces. Okay, forces uh, m r bar omega square, r bar is the radius, and f t is the tangential force, normal force and tangential force, and omega is the angular velocity. All very simple expression, like by using the Newton's second law, force is equal to mass and acceleration. We are simply calculating the normal force and tangential force with the help of normal acceleration and the tangential acceleration. Okay, so again, we'll be using for solving small, uh, very simple problems in the case of uh, MCQs with the help of FN and FT, AN and AT. For example, if the velocity is, suppose for example, if the velocity of the airplane is constant, means the tangential velocity acceleration would be zero, AT is zero, and the inertia force FT is zero. So you'll have only the normal force Fn. And again, if you're taking the angular acceleration in, is constant. Okay, the following relationship, you can use it. Okay, so you, this is, uh, this is for V minus, in terms of velocity we are having, velocity and acceleration, this is for angular, angular acceleration. Okay, that is for linear one. So omega minus omega naught is equal to 80. What is omega angular velocity after time t? And initial angular velocity in radian per second and the angle of rotation in time t. We will also use this formula to solve some simple problems in MCQs. So just remember all these conditions that is very, very important. Okay, we are not going to study in detail, just all the few things which we should know, uh, very small calculations. These things we will study in detail in flight dynamics. And these are the forces acting on an aircraft uh, in flight. Okay, in flight. So you could see these are the forces acting on an aircraft, uh, thrust and lift, drag, and the switching moment or a moment uh, acting about the aerodynamic center, weight of the aircraft acting through the CG, IL is inertia moment or inertia force, sorry, inertia force normal to flight path. ID is again, uh, inertia force parallel to flight path and uh, IM rotation about rotation, inertia moment and E is the tail load. We could see in the figure, which are acting at a different location in different distances. Okay, I'm going to resolve the forces with respect to uh, sigma f x direction and sigma f z directions and I'm going to take moment about uh, the z act I mean about the axis which is normal to the screen okay <coughs> so here you can see for uh, horizontal constant velocity flight condition the initial forces i l i d i m would be zero so this condition you should remember for horizontal constant velocity flight condition the initial forces i l I M I D would be zero for accelerated flight conditions involving translation, but not angular accelerations about its own uh, C G axis. Okay, I M would be zero, whereas I L and I D will have some values. Okay, now for equi equilibrium of equation, but just introducing the equilibrium equations for steady flight. Okay, for steady flight, for steady flight, this I D I L I M will not come into picture. You can see here equilibrium equations. Uh, for steady flight, okay. So this is the x direction, that is the z direction, and y is nothing but normal to the screen, normal to the screen, okay. Resolving the forces in x direction, right hand side positive, left hand side negative. Okay, d is drag is acting right hand side, and this is the w sine theta will act right hand side. So take w cos theta means black downward, okay, downward, okay, that is in the z direction. So w sine theta acting right hand side, so plus w sine theta, and t is the thrust, t cos beta acting left hand side, so minus t cos beta is equal to zero. And sigma f is z, sigma f is z, okay, resolving force in z direction, 
L is acting upward positive and W cos is acting downward negative and T sin beta acting upward positive and E is the tail load acting downward negative minus E is equal to zero. Let us take moment about Y axis that is a normal to the screen sigma M Y is equal to zero. M A is the moment acting about this. I mean, this is nothing but we are taking a moment about the center of gravity. Okay, so M A anticlockwise minus M A. Okay, M suffix A and uh, this lift L into distance is A. Okay, L into A anticlockwise negative and D is the drag D into B distance D into B and T cos beta is the horizontal component acting left hand side T cos beta into C. Okay, into C gives you the force about uh, there is a moment about uh, y axis and in this E capital E tail load in the small letter E distance E into E. A moment clockwise moment so it is positive so these are the equilibrium equations for steady flight steady flight okay steady flight and in accelerated flight you could see here uh, the inertia forces will come into picture just just to copy this expression as it is and you include only the inertia forces okay id so id is acting in uh, left left hand side id okay you can see here il is acting uh, downward and im is acting in about i mean uh, the cg uh, this in clockwise sense so it is positive okay and also you should remember always the inertia force will act in a direction opposite to the direction of the acceleration always okay always remember the direction of the inertia force will be in a direction opposite to the direction of the acceleration very very important okay so based on the design conditions based on the design conditions uh, the, the civil and military aeronautic authorities whoever it is they disclose the requirements the basic requirements that each and every airplane or each and every aircraft must meet those requirements for certification purpose design certification structural design certification purpose okay so this aircraft see if i already i told you every airplane can fly i mean having its own maximum speed the maximum altitude if i take maximum altitude means uh, you will be learning about uh, service ceiling or absolute ceiling in future so every aircraft is having its own altitude the maximum acceleration or the maximum maximum velocity it can be it can be flown or we can call it as a dynamic pressure so all these parameters decides what type of airplane it is whether it's a subsonic type of airplane there's a low speed or high speed airplanes or whatever it is and the accelerations due to maneuvering which is nothing but under the control of the pilot uh, that is also very very important so as uh, in some i mean most of the aircraft nowadays accelerometer is also installed in the cockpit so that there is a range uh, above which the pilot or the aircraft will not be flown so there is a restriction in the acceleration also all these things should be taken into account during flight okay so that the structural damage can be avoided so that the aircraft can fly within the safe limit or safe range okay so the accelerations uh, the i mean on the airplane are produced from two ways that is from the maneuver that is during maneuver that is which is under the control of the pilot and also the air gas okay this air gas depends on the uh, magnitude and the velocity of the air gas actually okay if you take the air gas it depends upon the uh, direction and the velocity of the air gas okay so as i told you already the accelerometer is installed in the cockpit just to as a guide to limit the acceleration factors okay so out of experience by running uh, so many i mean aircraft at different speeds at different altitudes uh, without uh, i mean uh, sacrificing the weight right without penalizing the aircraft from the weight considerations so they have arrived uh, the air gust so by making the aircraft to fly in different altitudes at different speed regimes in different uh, weather conditions different locations they have found out a uh, gust velocity of 30 feet per second or 9.14 meter per second which are sufficient for calculating or for doing any structural design 